any advice, any pearls, any gems that you can give to us? The only other thing we haven't covered is that that would be common and would also be controversial is I would say, don't, don't be scared of testosterone. Um, you know, guys, guys will, um, like, so here's the thing is there's a normal because it's normal. It's normal. It's not high. We're not talking about high testosterone levels. Um, testosterone can make a huge difference in energy, muscle strength, uh, sex drive, mood, erections, heart disease risk, diabetes risk. Um, it, it has several benefits in the body. Insulin production in males, low T is very common, is a very common side effect of insulin resistance. In yeah. the ladies, we see PCOS with high testosterone and low estrogen, low progesterone in insulin resistance. So it's kind of a polar opposite, but that's the uh, um, steroid hormone production blockade um, that happens with high levels of insulin and insulin resistance. So, wow. So what type of testosterone would you advocate for? Is it the gel? Is it a pill? Is it an implant? How would you do that? And is there a difference between males and females? I see a lot of, of my female patients, and we measure testosterone all the time, that are on super high doses and yeah. are highly stimulated from a libidinal perspective, probably a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. what, what are your, separate that out a little bit if you've got time. It's definitely different as far as the levels you're looking for in um, ladies and in guys. And um, I would say there is a benefit for some testosterone in ladies. Um, but like you said, not going super high on it. Um, and then there's a lot of benefit, I think, for for guys to be, you know, in that that good range, which I would personally call a total testosterone somewhere between 350 and 1100, which is a big range. But, you know, you'll see your your diabetics and your obese uh, patients that are guys who will have a testosterone of. 100 and oh, very, very, very common my target range for them is five to six hundred so it's kind of yeah. a narrower target but in that range and we actually see when they become insulin sensitive we see that testosterone coming up naturally i tend to look mostly at the free testosterone i look yeah. at the as well but i tend to be more concerned with the free um because I think of the, the range i think the free is more accurate and i think that that's where it should go long term as far as what we use um as a standard and and what what form of medication would you recommend how would the testosterone be taken honestly the easiest way is either shots or there are companies that do pellets um those are probably for guys and girls the easiest ways there there's a there's a pill um out there that's like way too expensive right now. It's not worth it for the price, but that'll come down over time. And honestly, the gels, again, pound for pound, I think are a little too expensive for what you can get out of them. Uh, so I usually tend to not, because they're doing them every day, it's this gel every day. And so I tend to not, unless somebody wants it, um, put guys on Gels. Yeah, I'm afraid of the gel also because of family members and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, rubbing uh, off. The only other caution I want to put out there, and correct me if I'm wrong about this, but if you are a professional athlete or if you are an NCAA athlete or someone who's going to get drug tested, don't do this. Right, that's correct. And so we've had, like, I've had uh, colleagues who take care of professional athletes. And so, like, they've had to, for example, um, we'll say, ask the PGA, you know, on behalf of this person, like this person has these symptoms, you know, this would help them, you know, can we do it? Um, and so that if you are an athlete, that's the best way to go about it. If that's something that you want to have as part of, um, you know, your health, they're probably going to say no, but. Is, to, is, is that part of gender reassignment therapy? Uh, yes. And I don't know as much about that because I didn't study in that, but yes, it is part of that gender reassignment for those who do that's, that. That's very politically charged, but 
Uh, wow, that is that is going to be a headline for me. Is you said, and I, I want to, I'll go back and get the quote, but you said, "Don't be afraid of testosterone." Correct. Don't be like, don't be. And and you know, we've seen like I would say the cardiologists, the OBGYNs, not to knock them, have probably been the the most hesitant across the board as far as like um, medical professionals. But even they and even some of their guidelines have been coming around, um, which is really encouraging um, because it makes a difference in quality of life. And and so I just think, you know, I mean, it just helps. So so one last question in that in that regard. Uh, I see a lot of low T, both male and fe- uh, well, uh, high T and f- females, but both ways. And I see females with even super low T who are on on therapy. I am very uncomfortable uh, as a physician because of the ethics. I agree completely with you in what you said. I, in fact, you've given me, like with the coffee, additional oomph for that. To, to make. Yeah. I am not going to prescribe that myself. I've made the ethical decision that I will not prescribe that, even though I do metabolic health, just because of the questionable side of things. Yeah. How, how do you find a physician who is not a doc in a box with a brown paper bag that can legitimately prescribe these medications at the correct dose, not just more is better. How do, where would you look? Where would you advise patients to look? A great question. So for guys, send them to a urologist because, you know, we are the men's health equivalent for OBGYNs with women's health. And so I would say almost all urologists should feel very comfortable managing even complicated, you know, situations, you know, and and when I talk about complicated little caveats, like I want to do this, but we're also trying to get pregnant or like, you know, stuff like that. Um, So send them to a urologist and for ladies, honestly, I would say it's hard. I would say the, OBGYN community can be hit or miss as far as where they are on that. And I think it'll evolve over the next 10 to 20 years because of patients saying, we want to feel good. We want to feel better. So within appropriate medical parameters, like like y'all tell us, you professionals tell us, like, who's going to manage this and who will manage it appropriately? Yeah, because I've I've been very afraid of some of these ads, the Roman type ads on TV. They right. they just scare me a little bit. So that is excellent, excellent advice, I, Dr. Thomas Kenneth. You you have no idea how incredible this has been for me. I've learned so much. These are common diseases, and they've corroborated or changed my thinking on so many things. This has been absolutely fabulous. 